Hi, I'm Danny Gasparini, and welcome to this segment of Penn Voice. I am joined by Tim uh, Goncharoff, and who is the resource specialist for the Santa Cruz County, and James Gao, who is um, the president and CEO of Green Citizen. Thank you both for coming. Yeah, so I learned before we started that the two of you only met last night. That's right. But you're uh, tackling a very important issue um, from various angles, one from a county perspective and one from a private industry perspective. So I think I'm going to open um, with... Um, we're going to ask you, um, Tim, tell us a little bit about this. No, we're going to start with you. I'm sorry, James. We're going to talk about electronic waste. And, right. and what is this subject, and, and how did you get involved in it? So electronic waste is basically any electronics that plug in the wall, run on the batteries. Right. So anything that's used for and when it reaches end of useful life, then you become a waste. So that's what it is. So it could be something like an, a, an old computer, yes. a laptop, yes. um, an old cell phone. Right. Um, so now we're seeing more and more of new generations of computers and laptops and cell phones and all sorts of things have mm -hmm. come up. And I, I must admit, I think I have three sitting in the closet yes. um, that I just don't necessarily know what to do with. So this is something that your company has gotten involved in. In addition to that, also your hair dryer, your microwave, your stereo equipment, your desk, your printers, anything plug into the wall run on okay. batteries. So it's very encompassing. TV, laptop, monitors, those are standard ones. But So how did Green Citizen get involved in this? Are you involved in the waste part of the removal? or the? No, actually. I actually is a high-tech person, actually. Uh, been a high-tech company for 20 years and saw a PBS program by Bill Moyle and discovered 80 or 90 percent of the electronic illegally dump in a developing country. Green Citizen is about developing a responsible recycling reuse uh, mechanism for consumer and uh, business in a metropolitan base so it can be self-sustaining. So I imagine then, Tim, if we look to you in Santa Cruz County, you're concerned about electronics making it into the waste stream. So we put it Absolutely. in your garbage can and it ends up in a landfill somewhere. That's right. Electronics contain a lot of materials, things like lead, mercury, other dangerous metals that we don't want in the environment. We don't want them in the air we breathe, the water we drink, or the soil we grow our food in. So it's very important that they're properly recycled. So what has Santa Cruz County then been doing about this waste um, removal. Well, we saw the same problems that James spoke of, learning that most of our electronic waste was growing to the third world, being recycled in very primitive fashion, often by women, children. We saw electronic waste being melted down open, over open fires, people breathing the fumes. We thought there has to be a better way. What we found is that there was already something in existence. There's a program called eStewards, that actually goes to electronics recycling companies and inspects them to make sure that they're doing everything properly using a modern health and safety procedures. And they certify those companies so that governments like ours can send our electronic waste to somebody knowing that it's going to be properly and safely recycled. So in Santa Cruz County, we passed a law saying if you collect electronic waste in our county, it can only go to an eSteward certified recycler. So then tell me, is Green Citizen um, one of those eSteward um, companies, or how then are you involved in making sure that the products get into the right hands of the right recyclers? We do use the eSteward to process the, the, the items. There's actually two problems when you okay. come to electronic recycling. The first mile problem and the last mile problem. When I say the last mile problems, when the item is collected, you have to have a facility that's certified to demanufacture the thing. And as, as Tim time. said, they're doing the right thing with that's it. They're the, not melting them down illegally or yeah. having them processed by children. And the first mile problem is who do you give it to? If you give it to you know, the two guys with the pickup trucks who drive onto the curve and pick up from your street, you don't know how that's going. Right. If you go to a company that actually has a rigorous process to do due diligence in terms of the recycling vendors, and you have a way to check it out and they have a way to validate on a day-to-day -day basis, then you know you're going to be sure that's doing the right thing. And so that's basically what Green Citizen is doing. is above and beyond the requirement by any regulation on how to collect the item properly. So are you sort of um, 
being the steward to ensure that what you're saying you're doing, you're actually doing. If, yes. if you're a company that says we are an e-steward, yes. that they are actually an e-steward. Yeah, we do check them out mm -hmm. and we do have an announced audit uh, to go to the facility. In addition to that, we also track the items coming to Green Citizen with the Green Citizen label. So we can track that label t from the point of pickup to the way it manufacture. So therefore we can validate that thing is properly uh, dismantled. So from a county perspective, um, obviously you have waste removal companies that are there picking up um, residents' trash, mm -hmm. recycling, compost. Mm -hmm. um, typically, electronic waste is separate from that as well as right. paint and pesticides. So typically it's on the resident to go and bring it somewhere versus mm -hmm. being picked up curbside, batteries included, right? Just the little That's right. cell batteries. So, how is this program now incorporated into your whole waste removal or recycling program for the county? Well, I'll reiter reiterate something you just said because okay. it's very important. Uh, electronic waste should never go in the trash, should never right. go in the recycling bin. It does need to be handled separately. In Santa Cruz County, there are a lot of places you can take it. All of our county disposal facilities will accept it. We also have nonprofit recyclers. The Gray Bears are very active in our area and they run recycling centers where they're happy to take electronic waste. And they're private recyclers. Um, and there's a whole range of them, including the ones James mentioned, which is just a guy with a pickup truck, right up to modern extensive companies. So one of the things that we found was the established companies that were determined to do the right thing had no problem with this. Some of the guys with the pickup truck decided to get into a different business. Well, that's good for Santa Cruz County. Absolutely. <laughs> what are some of the things that as citizens we need to be aware of other than I, in my mind, I, I'm thinking about the computer and the phone. That makes sense. But I just thought to myself, what did I do with that old clock radio? Mm -hmm. yes. Did that just go in the trash? Because mm -hmm. you, you don't necessarily think about that. Or you had mentioned hair dryers sometimes. So the whole, the whole concept of Green Citizen is that not every citizen, in fact, every citizen shouldn't have to get a PhD to recycle your electronics. Right. <laughs> so we make it a one-stop convenient for you to come to our Burlingame Educational Recycling Center that you can come in, you'll be greeted by a staff that's gonna educate you about the e-waste crisis and allow you to drop off a lot of items. Some of the items is, are free, other items is a small charge of 50 cents a pound. The reason why we need to collect that is that because for the e-store certified manufacturer, they have to spend a huge amount of money, millions of dollars to for a facility to turn on to have the machine crash down. Right. It's going to cost money. So we have to pay them properly. So at the end of the day, is there a product left over within some of that electronics that is not reusable and ends up in landfill? Or do you typically take the entire product and putting and recycle it in different That's ways? That's a very, very good question. We actually service 90% for the business around the whole Bay Area and 10% for the San Mateo County residents, pretty much. Uh, we try to reuse as much as possible in whole or in part, which is about 10% of the volume. The other 90%, we sort them properly. It's like any household recycling. Better sorting leads to better stream of material to be crushed down and can be reused for another life. So we sort them very well. So your facility is located in Burlingame, but I imagine that anybody who wants to bring product to you has the opportunity to bring their electronics to yes. you. We have people from all over the Bay Area driving from Marine, Santa Cruz, Berkeley, East Bay, you know, as well as San Francisco to, to the Burlingame facility. So Tim and James, what would be the advice that you would give not only government from the government perspective, but also private citizen perspective on what we should know and what we should be doing for our counties and for our homes and residences? Uh, I would say that you have to be uh, more knowledgeable, get yourself educated on this electronic recycling area. It's, it's not, you don't trust anybody with your recycling volume. If somebody uh, come across if that this is a piece of bread, you know, piece of cake to do that, then that's not, that's not, it should be. It should be a good discussion on what do you do with it? How do you track it down? How do you make sure that we use a recycle responsibly? You have to do your due diligence. 
any company on, if you look at the website and they don't discuss any of these issues, right. you can pretty much rule it out. That's not a legitimate company. Right. Because they try to make it so simple. Which and I can see where that happens because once you sort of out of sight, out of mind, mm -hmm. you think you've done mm -hmm. um, sort of a good service by not throwing something in the waste stream exactly. and then you think, oh, well, they must be the experts. They yes. came and took it and then you, you kind of say, okay, not my problem anymore. So, But we really do have to, because we could create yes. even more problems yes. if they are recycling incorrectly. Absolutely. Government, what do, how do, what do we need to I would know? add a couple of things. First, be a responsible consumer. The U.S. generates more electronic waste than any other country in the world. Part of that is because we're constantly replacing our toasters, our blenders, our microwaves, and of course our telephones. Ask yourself, do I really need a new one? Secondly, be a responsible recycler. If it's got a cord, if it's got batteries, if it's got circuits in it, it's e-waste and it needs to be handled separately. It should never go in the trash or the recycling. And I'm, I'm so glad that I learned about um, some of the certification programs here today, too, so that we know that there's kind of like this Better Business Bureau um, stamp mm -hmm. of approval for someone that we've asked to come and pick up or we drop off our e-waste. Well, thank you both for joining us today and enlightening us. It's something that I didn't think about today when I got up and got dressed. So I really appreciate the conversation. Hope you both will come back. Thanks You're for welcome. having us. Thanks so much for all of you joining me on Penn Voice, and we'll see you next time.